All right, from the end of spring practice until the opening of camp in August, not a whole lot going to happen among personnel groupings around college football. Therefore, it's a good time to set us up for 2016. We stop at Miami with Cam Underwood from State of the U to talk quarterbacks. Cam, as always, thanks for joining us. And one of your favorite subjects, Brad Kaya. Another great season as a sophomore, even improved on his freshman campaign. I want to know basically two things here. What makes this kid so good? What really distinguishes him in your eyes? And number two, is there anything he can improve on that you would like to see going into uh, this fall? Well, you know, it's always good to be here and always great to talk about Brad Kaya. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to like with Brad Kaya. He's a smart kid. Uh, when he came in two years ago as a freshman, uh, his high school in California did not let him graduate early. So he did not come for spring ball. He came in, you know, about this time, actually, in May, um, and just picked everything up. Very smart, very astute, knows his reads, doesn't really make many mistakes uh, throughout the course of the spring. Even Mark Rick, you know, who's calling plays for the first time in many years, uh, he would, you know, call something and Brad would be like, don't you mean, you know, this, uh, correcting a personnel grouping or an alignment or something. So, I mean, he can even correct the coaches on his knowledge of the playbook. So that's obviously something that you love to see. Uh, putting people in the right positions, uh, checking to the right protections, uh, which may or may not matter with our Civ-like offensive line, Second from him is his accuracy. Um, I know that he's been under 60% completions in the last couple of years. Um, and even at the spring game, he was only about 58 or 60%. But if you look back, there's a lot of drops. You know, there's some guys uh, on the receiving end who are not making the plays. But if you go back and evaluate the throws, kind of pro football fo focus style where you evaluate the throw uh, on time and on location, his throws are usually on time and in the right location. Uh, doesn't really make many mistakes that way. Has a I mean, he doesn't have a Jay Cutler-like arm where it's not just, like, zipping all over the field like that. But he has a strong enough arm. I mean, he's, you know, league average, league average plus where he can make all the throws that you look for from a college or NFL quarterback. So, um, you know, things like that really uh, make him stand out. Uh, and he just – He's just confident swag, like not really, you know, frantic or anything. Just, look, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go out and do that. Um, and, yeah, so those, those are things that I, I really like about Brad Kaya's game, things that he can improve a little bit of his mobility in and out of the pocket. He's never going to be a runner like a Mike Vick or Deshaun Watson, um, but maybe seeing him be a little bit more athletic, uh, moving the, the uh, release point, as they call it. So, you know, a couple bootlegs, rollouts, things like that. He started to do that at the end of last season, but even taking that a little bit further. Um, and Mark Rick is big on footwork. Uh, and so he's changing the footwork a little bit uh, for Brad Kaya, but really uh, seeing him embrace that and hopefully having that make him a little bit more elusive uh, so we can slide around the pocket and continue to make the throws that, you know, we've grown to know and love over the last couple of seasons. Um, you know, I want to see the third down percentage become uh, better. Basically, we were one of the worst teams on third down last year uh, in the country. Uh, you know, when you have stats that are, you know, among some of the worst teams uh, in America, I think we were like 123rd for a while on third down conversions. Uh, you know, come hell or high water, that has to improve. And that really does have to improve with Brad Kaya. So, uh, like I said, love him as a player, but things that we can improve upon. Also, um, I know that wins and losses are not a QB stat, uh, as, you know, I've gotten to, to really understand sports statistics more as I've, you know, gone into the blogging world and things like that. But I want to see him win some of these big games. I want to see him beat a Florida State and Notre Dame uh, – get to an ACC championship game, you know, win our division, you know, continue those kind of things. Um, and I know it's not only on him, so don't don't pretend that I'm saying, oh, this is only on Brad Kaya. Because last year he had 400 yards, three touchdowns against uh, Florida State, and we still lost. You know, so he did uh, – I mean, he had two interceptions in that game also. But, you know, a one-possession game the last two years against Florida State with the ball in the fourth quarter, chance to go win. For whatever reason, that didn't happen. And I'm not putting it all on him, but I want to see that be the next step where we have this great guy, this great kid, this smart kid um, who's being talked about as a top two, top five NFL draft pick if he chooses to come out after his junior year, uh, this upcoming season. I want to see him win some games. Uh, but again, I know that's not only on him, but it is partially containing him. So yeah, that's what I'm really looking for. Cam, based on his dedication, based on his acumen, I wouldn't necessarily, I'd be impressed, but not necessarily shocked that he was correcting coaches on calls. But considering this is a new coaching staff with, I'm guessing, new terminology, 
I'm even more impressed that he's making correct uh, uh, and correcting the, the coaches on some calls. That said, different offense, is it that much a different from what he's seen in the past? We know Mark Rick lines up in the pro style, wants to run the ball first. Uh, do you think that's a big adjustment at all? I don't think it's that big of an adjustment because Brad Kaya, uh, some of the things – that I loved about him when he was a recruit was his ability to like throw slants, uh, just you know one two three step boom and let the ball go. That quick game um, in the passing game is where he excels, and that is a staple of a Mark Rick, Rick passing attack. So you're still doing things that fit an example or uh, elevate Brad Kaya's uh, skill set. So on that side, I like that. Um, it is a little bit different. Mark Rick has come out and said. Um, Basically, we're not going to do the check with me system where, you know, you do your fake cadence, hut, hut, and then you look to the sideline, figure out, and then come back. Because what defenses started doing last year, um, and I, I wrote about this on the site. So we, we did that previously with James Cole, the offensive coordinator. And I said, if we went two plays per quarter, which is eight plays per game, where you line up and go, where you don't do the check with me, now that defense can't play that same cat and mouse. Because what they would do is defenses would line up in a particular formation, and then they would just say, okay, we're going to wait. We're going to show them one thing. They're going to look to the sideline, and we already know what our real call is. Then we're going to go to our real call because they're adjusting to what we showed them, which we're not actually running. Now they come back, and then it's like, okay, three seconds left. Well, they're, they're not lined up like I thought they were, but I got to now run with this, and you haven't accounted for what they're actually showing you. Um, and that was a thing that caused a lot of people consternation um, because there was no real – uh, there's no tempo variation with that. If you give the Oregon on the ball, let's go, on the ball, let's go, and then do hut, hut, look, sometimes you can catch them. Now Mark Rick said, whatever they did before with the check with me, we're not going to do that because I don't want the quarterback to look with me. I want him to know and go. So he's just going to he's gonna have his play call with his two or three built-in side adjustments and checks, but he's going up to the line and then he's going to run the play. Or he'll audible to something different, but it's not going to be, okay, like, you know, Dad, is it okay? Are you sure I can go out tonight? Okay, cool, and then come back. We're not going to do that anymore. Um, it is going to be a little bit more run heavy, but we have a stable of running backs that is capable uh, of of really causing some damage on the ground uh, if they get some holes. So that's, uh, I think, going to not eat, not hurt Brad Kaya, but make it his job a little bit easier. Um if you give the hard play action fake, that's the one where the quarterback turns his back to the defense. So you're looking at the name plate on the back and he, you know, ducks down, not the little kind of read option fake, but the hard, hard play fake kind of thing. Defenses have to respect that if you have Joe Yearby and Mark Walton and Gus Edwards and, you know, maybe Treyon Gray, maybe Travis Homer. You have those guys getting, you know, 5, 8, 10, 20 yards on the ground and we're pounding them on the ground. Now that play action game really matters. Because in previous years, that token play action, there were times, and I would tweet it during the games, where Brad Kaya would play fake to air, i.e. the running back is just standing there like he's going to pass protect, but the play says do the play fake, and Brad Kaya is going to take out his ball fakes and things, but it, I mean, there was no threat of the run. If you have the threat of the run with a Mark Rick offense, with you know Thomas Brown being the offensive coordinator who worked at Wisconsin when Melvin Gordon was setting records and last year worked at uh, – at Georgia with Mark Rick when, you know, he had Nick Tubb and Sonny Michelle and those guys, you know, doing very well over 2,000 yards rushing. That combination is really not going to hinder Brad Kaya. That's going to open things up even more. And so you have Stacey Coley, Amon Richards, Sam Bruce, uh, David Njoku, Chris Herndon, and the list goes on. Those guys are going to be able to find space and be open. Yo, that can be a problem. Cam, I like Cam, the I like uh, correction on correction cadence, cadence because – Certainly. Certainly. Miami, Miami is not the only team that struggles with that. You, you see teams all over the college football that are extremely predictable and do exactly yeah. what you explained right there. All right, let's look at the backups. Uh, it starts with looking at your depth chart going into spring. Your number two guy, Malik Rozier, out of Mobile, 24th rated dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, Evan Sheriff's a big 6'6 kid. Jack Allison also at 6'6, but rail thin at this point, but a uh, huge recruit. So how do you size him up uh, past Kaya? I, fi I find the quarter backup quarterback situation uh, interesting for any team because it goes from being the least important position on the field unless the stud goes down, and then it becomes the most important position on the roster when this kid has to play. Yeah, I mean, the, the backup quarterback can be the most popular guy on the team. You know, if your starter uh, is not great, 
uh, but he is the most important guy because there's one ball on the field. So you're going to have one quarterback on the field at a time. Um, and let it not go by the wayside. The Brad Kaya is a superstar. I mean, all American Heisman trophy candidate, um, you know, pending Miami actually winning more and things like that. Brad Kaya, and that's the thing, he is a superstar. I know that the record in the last two years is 13 and 12 with him in there as starter, but he, Brad Kaya is that dude. He's the best quarterback we've had since, you know, Ken Dorsey, Brock Berlin. I mean, he is a superstar. So now you talk about that and you come down to the backup level, things are, are, are questionable. Um, you have Rozier, who started the Duke game last year, came in in the Clemson game after Kaya got the concussion. Um, and uh, he, I don't really see him as a good fit skill-wise for this. He holds the ball too long. And I talked about a couple of minutes ago how uh, Mark Rick offense wants you to hit your third step, fifth step, and that ball be gone. He's not built for that. He wants to – he's like a Derek Crudup was, a uh, throwback for Miami Hurricanes fans, you know. Uh, he wants to hold the ball, maybe run around, make some plays. All of a sudden, he's 60 yards down the field. I thought he was going to get sacked, but he has a touchdown. He's, he's that boomer bust kind of guy. I don't think that a quick strike passing game fits him that well. Um, but – he has the playing experience of the guys behind. So there's that in his advantage uh, for him. He is a little, he's shorter than the, I don't really hope that he plays that much, honestly. Um, Evan Sheriffs out of Jefferson, Georgia, I said last year when we did our recruiting recap, and you look at that video, that he was arguably the most accurate high school quarterback I'd ever seen. I stick with that. His accuracy is his biggest strong suit. Uh, he has gotten bigger. He has maybe a league average minus arm. It's a little bit less than uh, Brad Kai's. So there's something, he's not going to really be zipping the ball around as much, but his arm is stronger than it was in high school already. Um, I think, and he was a valid corner of his class, had offers from like Harvard and Columbia and things like that. Um, so he's a very intellectual guy, I say that to say. So I'm sure that he's picked up the offense pretty quickly. He's my guy that I think is going to win the backup job. I said this um Pretty much even through the season when, when Rozier was playing, uh, I didn't th obviously, Sheriffs was not ready last year. But for this year, I see him taking that leap over and being the, the guy to come in as a backup. Um, Vincent Testaverde, Vinny Testaverde's son, is on the roster as a walk-on. Um, you know, he's the emergency guy, really. Uh, don't really see him playing much at all. Uh, if he does, then injuries have ravaged this team in a bad, bad way at the quarterback position. Uh, Jack Allison, a four-star recruit, has a – He's the one on the roster with the cannon for an arm. I mean, he can throw that thing through a brick wall, you know, from a mile away. What he can't necessarily do is drop it in a bucket with pinpoint accuracy. So he's, uh, you know, he's 6'6", 170 pounds. Uh, and if you're thinking about that in your head, yes, that is real thin. So I'm looking at him to take a redshirt year, uh, study with Brad Kaya, actually uh, on their break, because uh, classes ended a couple weeks ago and summer session starts on Monday. Um, that's May the 17th, uh, sorry, 16th uh, for you. Um, he was in L.A. with David Njoku and Brad Kaya at a Dodgers game. So it seems as though Allison and Kaya are becoming close friends, and there's no better person for Jack Allison to learn from if he wants to be the quarterback of the future than Brad Kaya. So, uh, yeah, I see it as Sheriffs as the number two, uh, Rogier as the number three, Testaverde as the four, and then Allison as, uh, in a do not break in case of super emergency uh, bubble uh, to redshirt this year, uh, get some more knowledge in the system, hopefully work on his accuracy, which can be improved with his footwork uh, improving also under you know the direction of uh, John and Mark Rick, quarterback coach and head coach, by the way. Uh, so you see that in those ways. So that's really what I'm looking at, the pecking order uh, behind Brad Kaya, who, again, is a superstar. Or I guess or I you could line it up like this, Cam. Yeah. Brad, Brad Kaya for hopefully, hopefully at least 13, 13 games for 2016. And yeah. hopefully we don't have to mention any other names at quarterback until 2017. Unless we're in, you know, on the positive side of a 58 to nothing blowout, then, you know, hey, not on the, or, well, I mean, God willing, not the negative side, but again, on the negative side, you know, something like that. But if it's a, you know, five or you know, seven touchdown game, then we can talk about the backups, uh, you know, one of those other guys. But otherwise, yeah, Brad Kaya, set it and forget it, and let's go. <laughs> Cam Underwood, State of the U, setting us up on uh, Miami quarterbacks for 2016 and beyond. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate it. No problem. See you guys.